G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. So today we're going to start a little adventure into uh, something new and hopefully more interesting. We've been looking for quite a long time at sort of just basic things like Mauve AX24 or you know Ink ECX and that sort of thing but um, apart from our little foray into algorithms when we did the uh, zero byte array we've not really looked at a full uh, programming example. So I'd like to change all that and start um, coding some useful examples. What I'd like to do is um, make something where we can really compare um, the C++ version of an algorithm to the assembly version of an algorithm and uh, hopefully we can get really good speed ups with assembly. But something to be careful of is that um, if you optimize the wrong things in assembly uh, if you optimize, for example, functions that are only called once when your program loads, um, you're not going to see speed ups. So, what we're going to do is um, program a front end in C++, and we're going to program image manipulation algorithms in C++ and assembly, and um, compare them both together, the time, the timing, and um, see which one's quicker then uh, we can start programming even faster versions in assembly and compare our assembly code to more assembly code until we see that we uh, really floor it. Anyway, so what we're going to start doing is um, basically making a C++ image front end. We'll have um, the common language runtime, your regular um, Windows C++ code, uh, load an image for us, and then we'll start manipulating the bits of the uh, image. Initially just a um, brightness algorithm to increase or decrease the brightness of the image in real time as well. I'm not talking about um, you know, increasing it one-off and then saving it to disk. We're using assembly here to get real time very fast speed ups. So yeah, that's hopefully what we're going to do. We're going to make a, a front end in C++. It's a big step forwards. Uh, we're not using the Windows console anymore. We're just going to jump straight into Windows programming, which is uh, a bit of a mess if you ask me, but anyway. So this is what we're going to do for our front end. We probably won't get to any coding in this tutorial, but I just want to describe exactly what we're going to do and maybe point out some of the uh, problems that we're going to face. Okay, so we're going to have a Windows program. This will be our main form. It's going to have a little X in the corner to close it. Um, it's going to have a file menu. Ooh, it's nice and straight. Well done. File like that and we're going to have open and exit just like that in our file menu. And uh, you'll open up a file and we'll have a big picture box just here. So it's going to be really cool. It's going to open up um, a lot of different image formats just thanks to uh, the common language runtime and Windows understanding a lot of these formats. JPEGs I'll use. Anyway, so the user will open up an image. Maybe it's a dinosaur. Ah. T-Rex. been discovered recently that maybe the T-Rex had some feathers so we'll pop a few of those on just to show that we're up to date anyway um, yeah so down the bottom of our image we're going to have uh, a slider or a track bar just like that and it's going to have its little needle um, over this side, over the very left, when the track bar is right over the left, it's going to mean negative 256, or 255 might be better, but we'll use 256 anyway. Uh, the middle of the track bar is going to mean 0, and the right hand side is going to mean 256. And what we're going to do is, as the user slides the track bar left and right, um, we're going to add uh, the selected value to the brightness of the image. So over the far right hand side, the image is going to be completely white, in the middle it's going to be normal 
and over the left it's going to be completely black. Alrighty. Okay, that's what we're aiming for. Let's just get a new window and we'll go through a few of the problems that we're going to have. Okay, so first of all, uh, the C++ that we're going to be using is going to be um, Common Language Runtime, CLR. And this is pretty much the virtual machine of .NET. It makes things a lot easier for us, like um, loading images and just using Windows controls. So we're going to use Common Language Runtime for all of that stuff and uh, only the image processing algorithm we're going to actually program in assembly. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, leaving to a particular programming language what that language is best at, and to be honest, assembly is not the best at uh, handling Windows controls and that. You know, it's just a big waste of time. Anyway, so the common language runtime we'll be using. There is a problem with this though, and that's that um, by default uh, when we open up a common language runtime Windows application in uh, Visual Studio it won't allow native code, so we'll change a few things around and we'll uh, coax him into letting us do some assembly code. Um, anyway, so the other thing that we'll have is um, managed managed code. Okay, so most of the stuff that we'll be doing for the front end will be what's called managed code, and that just means that Windows is going to take care. of our memory which means that we get a garbage collector and we deal not with pointers but usually with um, handles and it's just a lot easier you know so we don't have to worry so much about uh, memory leaks and that sort of thing so this managed code is all sort of part of the common language runtime and uh, thank goodness because it's uh, not easy we will, however, for performance code, we want to step away from managed code, so um, when we get into assembly we won't be using managed code anymore. But I do just want to speak about exactly what a handle is. I think there's maybe some confusion between handles and pointers, but uh, this, is, this is pretty much what it is. So we've got RAM just here, for example. And let's say that um, in our program we've allocated a few arrays in RAM, maybe we've allocated an array called A, Beside that, we've allocated an array called B. There may be one called C, something like that. And uh, maybe we've got a whole big bunch left here to be allocated. And uh, each of those will have a little pointer or a handle. But um, then at some point, maybe we free the array B so that um, this spot in RAM is free and this spot in RAM here, this big spot, is free but we've still got A and C allocated. Now let's say for example that we want to allocate uh, another array, a really big array called D, and let's say that D is so big that not only does it take up you know, most of this, but we also need this little bit as well. So um, D would take up all of the rest of our memory. And if it wasn't for handles, uh, Windows, you know, we will have run out of memory because you can't allocate an array unless it's contiguous memory blocks and this plus this isn't contiguous, there's a C in the middle so what we need, or what Windows is going to do is um, behind the scenes, because we're using handles it's going to grab this C array just here and it's going to shift it back to be uh, right next to the A just there so we'll have a C there and all of the memory that's free in our system will be in a contiguous block so that when we come to allocate our D array no worries there he goes right there gigantic D array um, but if Windows is going to be changing the pointers uh, you know if Windows is free to change the pointer to C like it just did then it shifted it that way um, we need something that's not going to change we need some method of referencing C that doesn't change even though Windows is swapping the actual position in RAM of C around and uh, the thing that doesn't change for us is the handle Windows will give us a handle that doesn't change and that handle will uh, point to the um, yeah the address of C even after Windows has changed it all around 
Um, all of this sort of memory managing mechanisms are really, really handy. But as soon as we want to get down and dirty into optimizing and making things really, really fast, um, it's no good. So we're going to jump out of managed code for our assembly functions. But um, I just did want to mention, yeah, exactly what a pointer is. Okay, those are just a few things that we might come across when we're programming our front end. If we go to the next page, I'll have a brief introduction to uh, exactly what a bitmap is, since we'll be editing them. So probably what's going to happen in our program is uh, the user will open JPEGs, or I'll be using JPEGs anyway, and uh, the JPEG is a compressed image format. And uh, as soon as it's loaded in RAM and displayed on the screen, it's no longer compressed. It'll be uh, in a bitmap. And what's a bitmap? Well, let's have a look. Uh, an image, as you probably know, is made up of um, pixels. Just like this. There's going to be thousands of them, really. Okay, so that's the um, top left-hand corner of the image, and maybe way down here is the t uh, bottom right-hand corner of the image. Anyway, each pixel on the screen, uh, if you get a magnifying glass or something and you look at the screen really, really closely, you can see that they're made up of uh, a little red light, a little green light, and a little blue light. And um, each of these little lights, little LEDs or whatever they are, is uh, free to take on a certain brightness. And you can go from everywhere from uh, 0, 0, 0, which is um, 0 red, 0 green, 0 blue, uh, which is black all the way through to 255, 255, and 255, which is white. And there's all sorts of combinations, so something like um, 255, 0, 0 would mean... Um, actually, can we just backtrack for a second? Um, yeah, we'd better. Okay, so right there I just said RGB. Um, we're going to be using bitmaps in the form um, what's called 24 bits per pixel and uh, RGB but I want to say that uh, actually in RAM it's going to be loaded GBR okay so the first pixel just here is going to have not no sorry um, BGR blue green red then blue green red then blue green red uh, each of these is a byte, okay? So we've got one byte for blue, beside that's going to be one byte for green, then one byte for red, and that's a single pixel. And then next to that we'll have the brightness for uh, the next pixel in uh, blue, then green, then red, etc, etc, etc. Yeah, so that's important to know. It won't matter right now whether it's RGB or BGR, since we'll be um, adding the same value to all of them when we increase the brightness, but it might matter later. So uh, anyway, back to this. Uh, this, if we had a pixel and, and those were the three bytes of it, uh, in RAM, it would mean that it's bright blue. And 0, 255, and 0. Uh, this would be bright green. If another pixel was 0, 0, 2, whoops, it's not a 2. Uh, this one will be bright red. And then, of course, you, you get combinations, so something like 0, 255, 255. Um, that's bright green plus bright red, which will give us um, yellow. And uh, our JPEG is, of course, going to have values other than 255. It's going to be something like you know, 64, and then 82, and then 123. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to tell Windows to stop managing our bitmap in its managed code. We're going to say, um, never mind the handle, Russ. Give us a pointer to that first blue component of that uh, byte just there. And then we're going to uh, step through. Let me just grab out an eraser. We're going to step through each pixel, or sorry, each uh, component of each pixel. And we're going to add a certain value to it. So this is how you increase the brightness of an image. Um, yeah, so the first, the very first one just there, we'll uh, add our brightness to that, then to the green component, then to the red component, then we'll go on to the next pixel, blue, green, red, and so on and so on. So if our image, 
if our image has something like uh, 1024 by 1440, I, that's not really a usual image, but uh, maybe that's how big our image is in pixels, 1024 by 1440. Um, then we're pretty much just going to set up a little loop, and we're going to step a pointer through every single pixel, and uh, every component of every pixel, so in total we're going to change 1024 by 1440 by 3 bytes. Alrighty, that's all we're going to do. Just add a particular value to all of those and uh, hey presto will have increased or decreased if it's negative, if the amount we're adding is negative, uh, will have increased or decreased the brightness of our image. Okay, this should be good fun. Anyway, that's the um, introduction to what we're going to be doing in the next few tutorials, and uh, I hope it proves interesting. Thank you for listening.